Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be trying out Ubuntu 2010 for the Raspberry Pi. This is the first official desktop version of Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi, and in this video I'm not just going to be checking it out, I'm also going to be making some comparisons with Raspberry Pi OS. So let's go and get started. Right, here we are on the Raspberry Pi section of the Ubuntu website where there's lots of different download options available. And if we scroll down, we can see them. First of all, we've got the download options for Ubuntu Server 20.04. This is a long-term support version of Ubuntu, which means it has five years support from April 2020. That's what the 2004 bit indicates. But Ubuntu Server doesn't have a desktop installed. And whilst you can install one on the Raspberry Pi, I've shown you how to do that in previous videos, this is not what we're going to install here. So if we go down a bit further, you'll see here we have Ubuntu Desktop 2010 from October 2020. And this has got support for nine months from its point of release, which goes to July 2021. And if you're thinking, what happens if you install this and you want to continue to use it? Well, by April 2021, will be Ubuntu 2104, which we can switch to at that point in time. And this is available for the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 400, because you need at least four gigabytes of memory to run Ubuntu 2010 on a Raspberry Pi. So this means you can only use Ubuntu 2010 desktop on a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 GB or 8 GB model, a Raspberry Pi 400 or a Raspberry Pi 4 compute module with 4 or 8 GB of RAM. And just to note down here, we've also got Ubuntu Server 2010. This is Ubuntu 2010 without a desktop, but again, that's not what we want here. So we'll download this file, we'll click on that uh, there, and it'll come down in a second, I would hope. There we are. And in fact, I don't have to download it. I've downloaded it already into my Raspberry Pi folder. There it is. So I won't waste that bandwidth by downloading it again. And we now need to write the image to a micro SD card. I'm going to do that using Belena Etcher, which you can get from belena.io forward slash etcher, as you can see there, already pre-installed on this computer. And indeed, I've got it running. Where well, we're going to select our image. And many people say to me, why do you use Belena Etcher to write images to micro SD cards? Why don't you use Rufus or the Raspberry Pi Imager or something like that? And the reason you can see very easily when we select our image. If we go down here and select the image. The image here is an XZ compressed file. When we select that, you will see immediately it's going to write it as an image file. It's going to decompress the file for us. And that's why I like using Bologna Etcher. It saves me decompressing files, having more file space used on my drives. I find that very handy. We're going to write this image to a micro SD card to put into our Raspberry Pi. Here I'm using a 32 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro, very good SD card to use on a Raspberry Pi. You don't have to use a 32 gigabyte card, 16 gigabytes would be fine. Anyway, we'll now click on a flash. Windows will give us various checks. Yes, we want to do this. And it'll write our image to the micro SD card. And there we are, it's finished. Ubuntu 2010 has been written to our micro SD card. We must ignore this message from Windows. We do not want to reformat the disk. Rather, we want to take the card and insert it into an expectant Raspberry Pi. Greetings, here I am back again. Everything seems to have gone rather dark, but do not worry, I've put the micro SD card into a Raspberry Pi 400, so if I turn it on like this, there we are. Hopefully in a second we will start to have something on the screen. We'll see the Raspberry Pi booting up. There we are, we've got the usual Raspberry Pi spectrum. And we will hopefully now enter the setup process for Ubuntu 2010. Oh yes, we've got exciting things happening on the screen. Oh, and uh, here we are on the desktop. This is the uh, Groovy Gorilla, the name of uh, Ubuntu 2010. And we've got now to what system configuration. I think I'll use English because I understand it better than other languages. I'm going to be uh, UK English, which will be fine for the keyboard. We'll uh, connect to a network, pick our geographic region. There we are. We now have to enter a name as well as a computer name and uh, a username and obviously a password. And here we are, welcome to Ubuntu. 
And as the setup process continues, I make the point it all feels very professional indeed. It feels very much like installing an operating system onto an x86 based computer rather than an ARM based SBC. And uh, here we are ready to log in. I can select explaining computers, put in my password. And we've arrived via a very straightforward process onto the Ubuntu desktop. And there's just a few final processes as you'd see in the standard Ubuntu install. I'm not going to connect online accounts. But I'm happy to send information to Canonical to help improve Ubuntu. Somebody should do that, I will do that. I'm not going to turn on location services. And there we are, we're ready to go. And before we have a look around the system, I'm going to do what I always do and change some display settings so things read better on video. Right, I've now spent some time testing out Ubuntu 2010 and it really is a very nice Raspberry Pi operating system. The look and feel is also very different to Raspberry Pi OS as we're now looking at here, which we all know was written for the educational marketplace. But Ubuntu 2010, the look and feel is a very different indeed, as you can see, it feels a lot more like the sort of a professional operating system you get on a standard PC or a Mac. This said, Ubuntu 2010 is, I think, a bit slower than Raspberry Pi OS. It's sometimes a little bit sluggish, as you'll see when I'm launching applications in this demo. It's also worth noting that whilst in Raspberry Pi OS, there are lots of controls for configuring fonts and scaling and other aspects of the user interface, options are more limited here in Ubuntu. And you may indeed have noticed that what we're looking at here at the desktop is not that different to what we were looking at in the last segment of this video. And I said I was going to make all sorts of scaling changes. I've not been able to make all sorts of scaling changes. And the reason for that is if we go in here to a settings, you will see down in displays, there we are, one second, there we are, there's displays down there. In displays, we should in Ubuntu be able to set different scale factors and set fractional scaling as well. I can't get this to work. I've tried this repeatedly on different installs and different pies, it just crashes. So at the moment, we can't sadly use the scaling and the fractional scaling that is available in the x86 version of Ubuntu here on a Raspberry Pi. And so all the scaling changes I've made, all the changes to the sizes of things have been done using accessibility, where I've changed things like the cursor size, so we can change there. I've selected large text, we just got one option there. And I've also used under appearance, things like the icon size has been altered on the dock on the other side of the screen. And whether this matters to you depends probably how old your eyes are, but if you've got eyes which are 50 years older or more like I have, it's nice to have all these ability to change all the different aspects of the UI. So it's, a, it's sad that we haven't got the, the display scanning working yet in a Ubuntu 2010 on a Raspberry Pi. Something else that's worth noting, so if we look in sound here, the default audio output device is headphones built-in audio. And we test that, of course, it won't work. Let's do front right nothing will happen because there is no 3.5 millimeter audio out at all on the other Raspberry Pi 400 and you probably don't want to use it as your main audio out on other Raspberry Pis either. You probably want HDMI audio. And if you do want HDMI audio, select multi-channel output, built-in audio. If we now test that, hopefully it will work. Front, right. Yes, there we are. We've Front, now got working right. audio on our system. In terms of built-in applications, we can see over here on the dock, we've got things like Firefox, web browsers pre-installed, Thunderbird email, we've got a nice file manager. I do like the look and feel of this stuff as you probably gathered. We've got over here something called Rhythmbox, which is a music player which you can use for playing music. That's what you normally use a music player for, isn't it? And we've also got down here LibreOffice Writer. If you want to use a Raspberry Pi as a word processor, very good to use it here with Ubuntu 2010. A very, very nice system. That'll come up there, we can type Hello, as it's customary in these. Oh, dear, I've got caps lock on. Let's type hello in a more normal fashion and go control A and make it very big, as I think is the law in any demo. You have to make hello very big indeed. There we are. We've said hello in LibreOffice Writer and we all close it down and go, no, we don't want to save this here. And we've also over here got the Ubuntu Software Manager where we can actually install software, update software, update the system as well. You won't see as many applications here as you would under, for example, 
arson design as you'd see on an x86 based system because these applications have to be available for an ARM based board like a Raspberry Pi. But there's still a lot of software available to graphically install things like GIMP, the Photoshop clone, Inkscape, etc. If you want to see all applications on the system in Ubuntu, just click the Show Applications icon down there. You can see lots of things here. We've got Solitaire, we've got a webcam program there. All the components of LibreOffice are also installed. We've got Shopwell for dealing with photographs. Sudoku, if we go down here, what else is down there? We've got Utilities. Let's launch up Utilities. Let's just launch up the Disk Usage Analyzer. There we are, and you can see we've got a reasonable amount of storage left on our 32 gigabyte drive. What, what six, seven gigabyte use here for the install. So clearly we could work off a 16 gigabyte card, maybe just about off an eight gigabyte card. And uh, we'll also just run up as we're here under utilities, let's go back, there we were, and we'll run up the system monitor. I'm sure some of you will want to see that. There it is, what's going over there? What's it doing? Scaled in very strange ways, that's supposed to be better, isn't it? There we can see we're running with, uh, what's that, about 1.2, 1.3 gigabytes of memory use of our four gigabytes available so this thing is running pretty efficiently and I'm sure some of you would look at that and go okay then why can't you run Ubuntu's 2010 on a two gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. So let's try and by the magic of filmmaking here we are running Ubuntu 2010 on a two gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 with only about half of the RAM used uh, running the operating system and the system monitor. And if we just run up say LibreOffice Writer you'll see it still works pretty well. It is possible clearly to run Ubuntu 2010 on a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model. It might not be quite as uh, nippy as it would be on a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes or 400 or something like that. But it does work. You're still, still we've got a reasonable amount of uh, memory free. So there we are. I proved you can run Ubuntu 2010 on any model of the Raspberry Pi 4. Guess what? It's now the next day. The next day, cries the groovy gorilla. Yes, it's the next day. And the one thing we've not tried so far in this video is going online. So we're about to do that. And I want to point out I've now flicked over to having a wired connection here. We're connected by Ethernet rather than Wi-Fi, just because I don't want the results here being impacted potentially by the Wi-Fi connectivity I've got here. But the Wi-Fi works perfectly well here in a Ubuntu 2010 on the Raspberry Pi. Anyway, let's launch the Firefox web browser. This is the out-of-the-box web browser we have available in Ubuntu 2010. And we can go to the world's favorite website. As you can see, it works. We can learn about single ball computers and they're there and that's fine. And we can look at quantum computing, which is really, really exciting. And this, this seems to work. So a very simple website works absolutely fine. But what happens when we get to streaming media? So let's go to my standard YouTube test clip. And people are always saying to me, why do you do a YouTube test in videos when you're testing out computers or operating systems or things like that? And the reason is very simply because these days I think it's a reasonable expectation in any desktop system that you can look at web pages and lots of web pages include streaming media these days, which is why I do the YouTube test. So we're in 1080p. Let's bring up stats for nerds. As you can probably tell already, this is not the most responsive thing we've ever seen. It is hopefully going to get there eventually. Uh, yes, but we've got certainly dropped frames. This is not perfect playback. I'm not sure that's even... Look, it's dropped back to 720p. This is really not, not good. Let's drop back to 1080p if we can. But I think you probably made your conclusions on this test already. Yes, we've got lots of drop frames and a lack of motion, which is always a, always a bad sign in video playback, a lack of motion, isn't it? So. When it settles, it's not disastrous, but this is really not very good. And we want to compare this, of course, to a Raspberry Pi OS. So let's go across to Raspberry Pi OS. And uh, here we are. Isn't it great how you can just switch the operating system on a Raspberry Pi just by changing a micro SD card? Very handy. Anyway, let's launch the default browser here, which is Chromium. Coming up like that comes up very quickly compared to launching Firefox in, in Ubuntu. 2010 and we'll just go to my standard uh, clip again which should be sitting down there. This is more responsive there's no doubt about that whatsoever. Hopefully it'll get YouTube up in a second. Can it full screen that? Go on you can do it. Hopefully it'll get there. It's in 1080p yes. 
We need stats for nerds. I think we can see straight away this is a better experience. Oh, oh, I wish it would actually stay on what it was on. That clearly isn't in 1080p, regardless of what it says down there. It's uh, Why do computers give us all the troubles that computers do? It's to keep us occupied, isn't it? What would we do with all the time that computers take from us if they didn't take that time from us? Anyway, this is playing better, clearly. We've only got one drop frame so far, so we've got significantly better streaming media playback here in Chromium in Raspberry Pi OS compared to uh, Firefox in Ubuntu 2010. This is rather, rather good indeed, actually. And therefore you might be thinking, why don't we try Chromium in Ubuntu 2010, which is a good thought. So let's go back to uh, Ubuntu 2010. And uh, here we are with the groovy gorilla. And by the magic of filmmaking, Chromium has uh, installed itself up there, ready, waiting for us on the docks. Let's launch it like that. Now it come up nice and quickly, didn't it? And I've also installed the H264 with five plugin here. So we've got exactly the same setup as we had in the Raspberry Pi OS. So let's go to the test clip like that. This is a little bit more responsive, isn't it? And full screen that hopefully. Oh, it's having a go. You never know what will happen. Who knows? It's gone to 720p. There we are. And 1080p is hopefully buffering for us now. That looks nice and clear, 1080p to me. And stats for nerds will come up. But I think we've guessed already, this is not as good as playback in Chromium on Raspberry Pi OS. This is still dropping a lot of frames. So Ubuntu 2010 is a very nice Raspberry Pi operating system. I do like it. But if you want to play streaming media in a browser, at least HD streaming media in a browser, you'd be better sticking with Raspberry Pi OS. Personally, I'm very impressed with Ubuntu 2010 for the Raspberry Pi. And if you're running hardware with 4GB of RAM or more, it's certainly a very credible alternative to running Raspberry Pi OS. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.